All right, welcome back. Today we're going to look at section 5.5, which is on rational functions and rational inequalities. So we're going to look at all of the things that you guys will be asked about rational functions and then also graphing them, and then we will look at the rational inequalities, okay? All right, now, as we go through this, a lot of information on this in this section. So your second page has all of the information. So we're going to start, before we look at all the information, we're going to do a problem that's kind of already graphed for us and has everything done for us, just so you can kind of see how we're going to do this. All right, so let's remember what a rational function is first off. We've already found the domains of rational functions. So remember that a rational function is a polynomial divided by another polynomial, and the denominator cannot equal zero. So to find the domain, remember, we set the denominator, figured out what made the denominator not equal to zero, and then we took those numbers out of the domain. So typical graphs of rational functions, usually a rational function is in pieces, not always, okay? But typically, they're, they're curves that are kind of separated. So their separation are what are called asymptotes. Asymptotes are either vertical in nature, okay? or an asymptote might be horizontal in nature. So we're going to be looking for those. And then we're going to be looking up for a few other things within a rational function. So that's what we're getting ready to do. All right, now, remember, you guys have a calculator, right? So you can always put your um, problem in a calculator. If you do, just remember what I said earlier about making sure your numerator is in parentheses and the denominator is in parentheses. If your calculator is set up to graph and it gives you the fraction bar already, then, then you don't need the parentheses, but it's just always a good thing to do that so that you get the correct graph. By the way, on these, these are just the parent functions. Okay, This is just the very simple 1 over x graph and 1 over x squared. Typically when you have squared, the Curves are kind of in the same area, you know, so these are both going in the same direction up and, you know, that way. When you have an odd degree, typically they're like kind of diagonal from each other, but there's lots of looks for these. So, you know, these are just the two parent functions. So we're not really graphing those, we're graphing bigger polynomials divided by bigger polynomials. So if you look at example one, this is the function that they gave us. It needs to be factored and it needs to be simplified. Okay, so notice when we simplified it, we canceled out those x minus 5. So those are, those are important. Every piece of this is important. Some of the answers you're going to get come from the original problem. Some of the answers you're going to be looking for would be easier to find from the reduced form. So it, it just depends. So we've got five of these to do together. So hopefully by the end, you'll kind of be getting the hang of this. Again, it's a lot of information, but once you do this a few times, it's all pretty standard, so you just have to kind of remember what's what. All right, so let's go through this graph and let's look at what we have to do. So first off, let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. That's what this is abbreviated for, and you'll see that on the next page. Horizontal asymptotes. So an asymptote that goes horizontal would be right here. These are also what we call an end behavior. So look at the graphs, what the ends are doing. Right? This is the end on the right, and this would be the end of the left side. So the end behaviors are heading to a specific number, and the number they're heading to would be this dotted line, which is 1. Okay? If this is 0, 0, this would be y equals 1 up here. So that would be considered a horizontal asymptote. So in other words, for horizontal asymptote, again, is end behavior. So this end behavior would be y equals 1. It's a horizontal line at 1, okay? The domain, remember, comes from setting the denominator factors not equal to 0, okay? So to find the domain, you would have to set x minus 3 not equal to 0 and x minus 5 not equal to 0, okay? Both of those numbers cannot be used. They would give me 0 in the denominator and I can't divide by 0. So this would give me that x can't be 3 and x can't be 5. So those are the two numbers that have to come out of the domain. So the domain would be from negative infinity to 3, 3 to infinity, 3 to 5, sorry, and then 5 to infinity. Okay, 
I got to take out three and I got to take out five. Every other number is good. So that would be considered the domain of this problem. All right, holes. Holes are common factors to the top and the bottom. Okay, so we would set x minus five equal to zero and we would know that there would be a hole at five. All right, so to find a hole, it's an ordered pair. Okay, a hole is an ordered pair. So that means it would be five something, okay? So once you find the x value of the hole, you're gonna put five into the reduced problem and figure out why. We would not wanna put five in here, okay? So let's think about why that would be. If I put five in here, this was the function before I canceled this out. So if I put five in here right now, I'm gonna get zero in the bottom. So you don't ever want to put the function value for a hole or an asymptote. You can't use them, okay? So I don't want to put them in here, but I can put it here because now I've taken the x minus 5 out. So now it's not a problem over here. So I'm going to plug in 5 over here. So 5 minus 1 over 5 minus 3. And I will get 4 over 2, which is 2. So that means I have a hole at the point 5, 2. There's my hole, okay? So if you look over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2, that is a hole. Okay, so that's how you find the hole. All right, the vertical asymptote would be the vertical line that your graph is not crossing. So at here it would be 1, 2, 3. Right? So x equals 3 would be a vertical asymptote. That's going to come from the numbers in the bottom that are not holes. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay x-intercept is where your graph crosses the x-axis so in this problem it only crosses at one okay and then your y-intercept is where your graph crosses the y-axis and remember to find the y-intercept you let x be zero so if i let x be zero and that could be in either place this is much easier so i'm going to get negative one over negative three right zero minus one over zero minus three negative one over negative three so that means this value right here is one third Okay. Now, we're not going to have the graph to do this in a minute. We're going to get these numbers other ways, so that's what we're getting ready to do. All right, so don't panic when you look at the next page. It has a lot of information, but we're going to go through it together, so hopefully you won't feel so overwhelmed when we're, when we're done with this. All right, so the first thing that we talked about was the horizontal asymptote. Very easy to find these, okay, the end behavior. So you're going to look at the degree of the polynomial. So go back to the problem we just did. Do you see how the degree is x squared in the top and x squared in the bottom? So all you have to do to figure out your horizontal asymptote is look at the degrees. So one of three things is going to happen. The degrees are going to be the same. The degree in the top will be bigger or the degree in the bottom will be bigger, right? Those are the only three possibilities for the degree. So this says if the degree in the bottom is bigger, m is bigger, then your horizontal asymptote will always be y equals zero. You don't even have to do anything. If the degrees are equal, then your horizontal asymptote will be the line a over b. So you're just going to take the leading coefficients. Okay. If the degree in the top is bigger, then there is no horizontal asymptote. You just write none. Okay. So I look at these, I call them something specific. So if the degree in the bottom is bigger, I call these bottom heavy. It's just kind of an easy way to think about it. So if the degree in the bottom is bigger, I'm going to call that bottom heavy. If the degrees are the same, obviously those are equal degrees, right? And then if the degree in the top is bigger, I'm going to call those top heavy. So when I look at a problem, I just say, is it top heavy, bottom heavy, or equal? So this one would be equal. So we would take the leading coefficients, one divided by one, and that's where that comes from, okay? So that's pretty straightforward, so it's not too difficult to find horizontal asymptotes. All right, remember those are the end behaviors. So your graph could cross it, but it's gonna end at that number, okay? That's the whole point of the end behavior. Now we've already done the domain, right? We set the denominator not equal to zero, find the numbers you're gonna exclude from all real numbers. Okay, holes. We just talked about holes on the first problem. You're going to find a common factor to the top and the bottom. 
Okay, find that x value and then plug that x value into the reduced function to find the y value. So we'll do that a couple times on the next few. All right, vertical asymptotes are the factors in the denominator that are not common to the top and the bottom. So go back to what we just did. So x minus 5 was the whole because that was the common factor. Anything left in the denominator is a vertical asymptote. So you just set that equal to 0 and find that value. So we set x minus 3 equal to 0. We got 3. That's where that came from. Okay. Now, factors are either holes or they're asymptotes. They're not going to be both. So once you crossed out this hole, it is no longer part of the problem. It's just a hole and that's all it is. But for your domain, both anything in the bottom has to come out of the domain. So this is everything in the bottom. Holes are the common factors. And then vertical asymptotes are what's left over in the bottom. Okay? So that has all the stuff to do with the bottom part of your graph. All right, x-intercepts, we know that we're going to solve for y. But basically, I'm going to just tell you the other thing about x-intercept, it's... Um, Factors in the numerator, numerator that are not holes. Okay, that's much easier. You don't have to do any solving. Okay, the factors of the numerators that are not holes. So again, look at your problem that we just did. Okay, in fact, I canceled that out. That was a hole. So what was left in the numerator was x minus one. That's a zero. And look at what we got for our x-intercept. Okay, so that's where you're going to find them. The numerator numbers that are not whole. So, so far, nothing takes a long time. There's not a whole lot of figuring. All right, we already know how to find the y-intercept. We're going to let x be zero. And then we can... I usually tell you guys, once you get to the graphing part, if you don't have enough points up here, go to your calculator, go to the table, and get some extra points. Okay? I don't spend a whole lot of time graphing because I know you guys can use your calculator for that. I'm, I'm more interested that you can find all these values. All right, so let's talk about example two. All right, so what can we do in this form before we factor, before we worry about anything else? And that's always going to be your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we're going to look at the degrees. They're equal. So since they're equal, you're going to take the coefficients of the top and the bottom. So that would be y equals 2 over 1. Remember, there's a 1 right there. Right? So that would give you y equals 2. So that means your horizontal asymptote is up here at 2. So remember, that's the end behavior. So that's the way the ends of your graph will be heading towards 2. All right, now the domain I would need to factor, the holes I would need to factor, the vertical asymptotes, I'll wait till I factor. Your x-intercepts, I need to be factored form. Now your y-intercept, I can do here because I'm going to let x be 0. And if I let f be zero, x be 0, anything that has an x in it will be 0. So I'm just going to be left with negative 6 over negative 1, which is positive 6. So that means my y-intercept is at 6. Okay, So I already got that. All right, now we need to factor. So in the top, I can take out a greatest common factor of 2. That leaves me x squared minus 2x minus 3. The bottom is the difference of squares, so that factors x plus 1, x minus 1. So let's keep going on the numerator. So the numerator can factor factors of 3 that subtract to give you 2 would be 3 and 1. So x minus 3, x plus 1. And then you have x plus 1, x minus 1 in the bottom. All right, so I'm going to stop there before I cancel. So the next thing I want to look at is the domain. Everything that's in the bottom has to come out of the domain. So x can't be negative 1, and x cannot be 1. Remember, you set each factor not equal to 0 and solve those. So x plus 1 can't be 0. That means x can't be negative 1. And x minus 1 can't be 0, so x can't be 1. So we have to take these numbers out of the domain. So the domain is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, 
run to infinity. Okay. All right. Once you get the domain, now we can look at a whole. So do we have a common factor? Yes, we do. X plus 1. So that means that X plus 1 equals 0 is a whole, which means X is negative 1. Right? And remember, we need the ordered pair for the whole. Negative 1 what? So now we're going to reduce this. So those canceled out, and we're left with 2 over X minus 3 over X minus 1. This is where you're going to put the whole value to find the Y value. You put it in here, you're going to get 0 in the bottom. So that's not going to help. So let's put negative 1 in here to find the Y value. So F of negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 minus 3 over negative 1 minus 1. So that gives me 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8, over negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So that gives me 4. So there's my whole at negative 1, 4. On your graph, you would graph it like that. It's a whole. Okay? All right, your vertical asymptotes are the thing left in the denominator that's not a whole. So now you have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Remember, set that equal to 0. It's x minus 1 equal to 0. So x equals 1. Okay? So vertical asymptotes are what's left in the denominator. Are right, your x-intercepts, remember, are what's left in the numerator. That's not a whole. This has not got an x in it, so that doesn't count. So we're just going to set x minus 3 equal to 0. So we end up with x equals 3. So there's your x-intercept. 1, 2, 3. All right. So if that's all I have, I don't really see a good picture of my graph, right? All right, so when we graph, we need to graph the original function. Okay. So we're going to put in, and again, I'm going to put mine in parentheses. Depends on how you, you have your calculator set up. So 2x squared minus 4x minus 6. Close my parentheses. Divided by x squared, oops, get parentheses, x squared minus 1. Close my parentheses. Okay? So i got to put the top and the bottom. Otherwise, you're going to get a totally incorrect graph. Okay? All right, so I'm going to hit zoom 6 to make sure I have my standard window. All right, so I see some stuff down here that I'm not so sure of, so. Uh, should I do something wrong with that? 2 square minus 5, I just want to make sure. Oh, yeah, okay. I knew something didn't look right. Okay, let's try that again. I didn't think my graph looked right at all. You could tell by the asymptotes I was off and the y-intercept. Okay, that looks much better. So now we have the y-intercept at 6, we've got our x-intercept at 3, so this looks like it matches better. And you'll notice that the hole, you don't really see a hole on your graph, but if you go to your table and look at negative 1, it's going to give you an error. Okay, It's also going to give you an error at your vertical asymptote, which was 1. Okay, So here's where I was saying, you could get more points now. Okay, I would, you know, if you're going to graph, get points that are actually whole numbers. They're easier to graph. So negative 3, 3 I could graph. Okay. I would want to get some things on the other side. So let's go to one we got. So 3, 0. So we've got 2, negative 2. We got 5, 1. So you can go to your table and get some more points if you want to. So again, when you're graphing on um, hawks, then you know if you need to, that's how you do that. Now I didn't draw in my vertical asymptote at one. Remember we had a vertical asymptote, so 
just so I can kind of get a better picture when I draw this. It's always good to draw on your vertical and horizontal asymptotes. All right, so now I know this won't touch one, so it's going to come up real close to one, and it's going to go towards two. And then the top will come this way from one, and again, goes through the hole, but the hole's not there really. Okay, so that's what the graph would look like. Again, and I got some extra numbers from the calculator. All right, so that one took a while. We had to explain everything, so now we're gonna go through again a little bit quicker. So let's see what we got on this one. All right, remember, your horizontal asymptote comes from the original problem. So top heavier, bottom heavier equals. So now if you'll notice, the degree in the bottom is bigger. It's x squared, and this is just x to the first. So when it's bottom heavy, always, your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. You do not have to do any work or anything on it. So I know the end behavior will be, it's hard to see, but the ends of your graph are gonna be going towards zero, okay? So there's your horizontal asymptote. Your, your y-intercept, if you let x be zero, then this whole numerator is gonna be zero. So you're gonna get zero over negative 12. So f of zero would be zero over negative 12, which is just zero, okay? So there's your y-intercept right there. All right, so that's about all we can do in this form. So now we're gonna factor. So six X can't be factored anymore, but we can factor the bottom, X minus four X plus three. Okay. So now we can get our domain. Set each of those not equal to zero and get those numbers that have to be excluded. So that would be X can't be four and X cannot be negative three. Set each of those not equal to zero. Those are the numbers that have to come out of the domain. So that would be negative infinity to negative three, negative three to four, four to infinity. Okay. All right, this one doesn't have a hole. There's nothing in common to the top and the bottom, so no holes. Your vertical asymptotes then would be both of these numbers, anything in the bottom that's not a whole. So we would have a vertical asymptote at four and at negative three. So one, two, three, four. So now I, when I graph this, I'm gonna have two asymptotes, vertical. So one's at four and one is at negative three. So again, I'm only dotting these in because when I graph it, then I can kind of see what I'm supposed to get close to all right, so that's gonna help me do that. And then your x-intercept, whatever's in the numerator, that's not a whole. So we would set six x equal to zero, so x is zero. So we already have, so all I have on here is one point. <laughs> okay, so I'm definitely gonna have to put this in my calculator to see what's left. So back to y equals, so we're gonna do six x in the top divided by x squared minus x, minus 12. Okay, graph that. All right, now, you can go in and get some more points, okay? Again, for time, I'm not gonna do that. You go to your table, get your points to, so that you can get this exact when you're graphing on hogs. For me, all I need to know is that these were my asymptotes, so I'm gonna be close to this on this side. I now know that the middle kind of goes like this. And then this side would be going over here like this. So when I sketch, I know that these numbers are not exactly you know, in the right place, the graph, but it's just the picture. What does this graph look like? Because for us, for your final exam, you're gonna be asked questions more like what we have here, okay? Because we know you can get this, the graph on your calculator. So please know my graph won't be exactly what you see on your calculator, and I don't really care that it is when you're sketching. Now in Hawks, if you need to graph it correctly, then yes, you're gonna go to your table, like I did on the last problem, and get some real value so that you know exactly where to connect the dots to, okay? Please keep that in mind. All right, let's look at example four. All right, now, on this one, we have top heavy, okay? So top heavy 
is the fact that there is no horizontal asymptote. Instead of a horizontal asymptote, you would have an oblique asymptote, okay? Now, an oblique asymptote, we don't ask you to find, okay? So, um, I'm going to just go through, but an oblique asymptote means that it's going to be a slant. I'm gonna, I like that word better. So that means instead of your asymptote going this way, your asymptote is going to go either this way or this way. It's going to slant, okay? Now, for those of you that did this in high school and remember, to find it, you would just simply divide this, okay? So I would take 2 in my, i just do synthetic real quick. 2, negative 3, negative 2. Bring down the 2, and I would do 2 times 2 is 4. Add that. Okay? So this is 2x plus 1. So that is your asymptote. y equals 2x plus 1. All right. So that means here's 1 up 2 over 1. All right. So that would be my slant asymptote. So remember what that means. That's your end behavior. So that means the end of the graph will be heading this way and the other end will be heading this way. Okay? All right. So domain can't be negative two, or sorry, x minus 2 can't be 0. So we're going to take out just 2. So the domain would just be negative infinity to 2, 2 to infinity. All right. All right. Now i got to see if I can factor the top. I may or may not be able to, so let's see. So I know I got x minus 2 in the bottom, so we just need to see what are the factors in the top. All right, so we got 2x and x, I know that. And then I need 3 in the middle, so 2 will be on the outside. So yes, I can factor. This will be minus, that will be plus, okay? All right, so that means I do have a hole. I have a hole at x minus 2. So 2 is my x value. Okay. So remember how to find the y value now. We're going to reduce. So if we reduce this, we get 2x plus 1. Okay? All right. So we're going to find f of 2 in here. So that's 2 times 2 plus 1. So we get 5. So there's a hole. 1, 2, 1, 2. Right there's a hole. Have a now, since this graph reduced, I'm going to get a very odd-looking rational function when we graph it in a minute, but let's just keep going. All right, vertical asymptotes. What's in the denominator that's not a hole? Nothing. So there's no vertical asymptote. Your x-intercept. What's in the top? Okay, that's not a hole. Set that equal to zero. So we get 2x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1 half. So right there. This is part of our line. Okay, that's the x-intercept. The y-intercept, remember you let x be 0. So if all of these are 0, we're going to have negative 2 over negative 2, which is 1. We already have that. So this graph is going to end up, because these canceled out, when you graph this function, you're going to get this line right here. So this is the graph of that rational function. Just be careful because on your graph, this is not going to look like it's a hole. It kind of looks like a little blip, but not exactly. So let's see. So if we put this in our calculator, 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. Divide that by x minus 2. You're going to get a straight line. And then watch what happens at 2, 5. Didn't do anything, right? So it doesn't look like there's a hole there. But again, if you go to your table and look at what happens at 2, you can't use that number. Okay? All right. So this was a weird rational function. It ended up being a straight line. And the only reason why that happened is because we had a factor that canceled out, and look what you were left with was a line. So that has to, that's what it has to look like. Okay? But again, we are more important asking you guys about this stuff. Okay? All right. Last one, horizontal asymptote. Top heavy, bottom heavy, or equal? 
This one is equal again, so you're going to do the leading coefficient, so negative 2 divided by 1, which is negative 2. So there's your horizontal asymptote is at negative 2. Okay. So again, that's the way the ends should be heading. All right, your domain, we got to find the factors. So negative 2x squared, and the bottom will be x, minus, x plus 3, x minus 2. Okay, so that means we're going to set each of those not equal to 0, and take those numbers out of the domain. Now, you don't have to do all this. You guys can, a lot of you can do that in your head. That's fine. So we're going to get x can't be negative 3, and x can't be 2. So negative infinity to negative 3 negative 3 to 2, 2 to infinity, okay? So there's your domain, okay? No holes, no common factor. Vertical asymptotes would be both of these because nothing canceled. So x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. Those would be your vertical asymptotes. So negative 3, okay, and 2. x-intercepts, set the, whatever's not a hole in the top, set that equal to zero, and solve that. If you solve that, you will get zero. So that's your x-intercept. Your y-intercept, you're going to let x be zero, so we're going to get zero in the top and then negative six in the bottom. So we get zero for that as well. So, again, only one point. So I would have to go to my calculator, and I would have to find some more points if I was going to graph this. So we're going to graph negative 2x squared divided by x squared plus x minus x. Again, it's going to have three pieces because I've got asymptotes. All right, so again, you can get more points out of this if you want. I'm just looking at the basic shape so I can graph it. This side goes this way. All right. So get your more points if you're doing that on Hawks and graph them. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop here since we're over the 30 minute mark and I'll do a part two video on the inequalities, which is coming up next. Okay.